So what's up guys? Uh, today's our leg day. Uh, hinge focus work, so we got deadlifts from the ground. We have been progressing the deadlifts from uh, blocks, mid shin, all the way down to the ground. Uh, so working just different ranges of motion. Get into some hack squats, we go single leg, hamstring curls, quad extensions, finish up with some calf, standing calf raises. So uh, today's a little bit different. A lot of times we talk about kind of like skill, output, output, ISO, ISO. Today we're going a little more like skill, skill. Because we're going so heavy on skill, uh, we're going to dumb down into so ISO, ISO, ISO. So in the beginning, when we were doing a lot of our exercises, we were in a hypertrophy phase, so we were doing the RDL. For both of us, we were able to load it a lot better, so it was more of an output exercise. The more we progressed, we went from kind of like mid shin to now on the ground. So we're kind of progressing from like an output kind of exercise into more of a skill. So when we put in our A1, we'll just get better at the movement. We'll load it over time, but we're going to stay around three to, uh, three to four sets. Reps are going to stay around four to five reps. Uh, we want our top top couple sets to be able to push a little bit more weight, but with it, we're still trying to like master this skill. So for me, tie my stance, feet a little bit straighter, so I can work into more of a pronated foot position, more internal rotation at the hip. I have a bias to stay a little bit more like kind of flared on my feet. It's been a big focus for you. Yeah. Especially because it relates a lot to your job. For me to be able to generate power, uh, while staying on my midfoot and be able to rotate, create extra rotation in my hip and swing. We'll be the same position we're in when we're, when we're getting into this deadlift. Looking at the deadlift compared to the RDL, if you want to do something that's a little bit more hypertrophy based, you want to get, you know, gain a little bit more muscle mass on uh, your kind of posterior chain, I would recommend doing an RDL. Uh, deadlift is a little bit more kind of skill focused. You're not going to get as much hypertrophy just because you're not putting a lot of mechanical tension on a single, singular muscle group. An RDL, we get eccentric and concentric components of the lift. Yeah. So that's more like hypertrophy. We're still loading it heavy. It's still like kind of a strength movement for us, but transitioning into this deadlift or to this block pool, it's going to be mainly concentric. So it's going to be purely forced production. Yeah. So we from like hyper should be, now we're going into a strength block. So this can make a more like forced production focus versus like hyper should be from the RDLs. So a little bit more range of motion as well on the concentric portion, but mainly like there's the, the big difference is like there's no eccentric component to this. Like yeah. we're not doing slow eccentrics. We're kind of just like concentric force production, laying it down. So good. Looks good. Oh, that's light. Tension, 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 fuck yeah. There we go. Money. Yeah. No rush, no rush, no rush. There you go. Money. Hitting B1, our main like knee bendy quad output exercise today. We're gonna go to the hack squat, uh, two sets, six to 10 reps. We're really just trying to load heavy knee flexion. Um, hack squat's a more vertical pattern. So we really get to focus on our quads more so than our glutes. He's got a racket on a different level for me. A good talking point here. We're gonna keep this as much on like knee flexion as possible. So a big thing people will do is they'll try and get full range of motion, but range of motion here is not necessarily full range of motion. It's full range of muscle, uh, full range of motion of the muscle more so than the movement. So as Joey goes down, if he wants to, he can bottom out. He can go past full knee flexion. What happens is the knees will trip back. So when we get to the point where we're in full knee flexion, ask the grass, but we don't want our knees to start shifting back, right? That's gonna take tension off of our quads. So I'm just gonna give him a little tactile cue right there. When full knee flexion stops, his knees can't go over his toes anymore. That's where the movement's gonna stop.
Joey's seeing God right now. His eyes are watering. Uh, sets and reps are going to be about two to three working sets. For me, I'm going to get a couple more working sets on this because I'm trying to get better at this exercise still. So, again, we talked about it in the beginning. I kind of went skill, skill with a deadlift into this hack squat. I'm still trying to get better at this. I'm not, I'm not great at moving vertical chest position on my pelvis. So the better I can continue to get on this, less knee pain I might have, hip pain, all that stuff. So getting in better positions where I can dissociate my pelvis and upper body. So. Perfect. That's good. You got ten. Seven. Eight. Nice. Two more. You got twelve. Let's go. Eleven. Yep. 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 One more good one. I got you. Smooth in the bottom, smooth, 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 good. Yeah, it's like, it's crazy the machines that are in like an NFL college weight room and the machines that aren't. Like you have a Kaiser squat machine in there, because that's athletic. The Rogers. But this, for some reason, is not in a college weight room, NFL weight room, because it's just too much about the bodybuilding exercise. Doesn't make sense. I don't think it's appropriate to put like these black and white labels on like machines are for uh, machines are for bodybuilders and like for basic for athletes. It's like every every exercise we do is giving a stimulus, it's giving exposure to a certain position. It, it's a tool for a job. So, for example, with Joey trying to check the box of getting a more vertical squat pattern, he tends to not be very good at getting into a vertical movement, getting like a lot of knee flexion. He tends to be more of like a, a hip dominant squatter. So in this hack squat here, instead of constraining him on the barbell, doing like a heel lift and going zercher, a heel lift going front squat, we can also give him exposure on this hack squat where it's gonna be a vertical movement no matter what you do. You have a lot of support on your back, your butt's on the pad, your back's on the pad. The direction of the machine can be purely vertical. You can get a lot of that knee, do knee dominant squat pattern um, with external stability, high output, good exposure to that position. So it's like, when appropriate, doesn't matter, he's an athlete, a bodybuilder, whatever it may be, it's like our goal is to get output in a vertical squat pattern that fits the box we're trying to check for him. And it's also kind of a thought process where <coughs> a, a back squat is like a strength exercise, but a front squat's like more of an athletic squat pattern. Well, this is a better front squat. This is even more knee, knee flexion, knee extension, and you want more knee health. As I just feel like this is an exercise that you could put in but there's no machine in the weight room. This is a better squat pattern for most athletes than a back squat's gonna be. The yeah. back squat's not gonna be a squat pattern. For most athletes, it's gonna be more of a hinge. Yeah, because we're like, all really good at hip extension. We're not really good at knee flexion. Yeah, exactly. knee extension. So if, our, if our goal is to get a squatty squat, let's get matter. an environment to do that. Yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go. One exercise is going to be line, single leg line hamstring curl. Um, we just did a whole bunch of kind of bilateral movements, so going a little unilateral with this, make sure we can stabilize our pelvis in a unilateral movement. Um, for me, obviously, too, I got uh, a little bit of asymmetry on the leg, so uh, help stabilize all this. Uh, a little bit more internal rotation where we're doing knee flexion. Um, we can go ahead and load this pretty well because it's more of an isolated exercise. Uh, sets and reps, top two working sets, 10 to 12 reps. Especially for Joey, as it pertains to the sport, when he kicks, he gets a lot of bicep bend in the way he approaches his kicks. So, um, kind of putting some of this in while he's getting less kicking volume. As he gets closer to the season and preseason, he has to kick more balls, probably transition this to more of like a, a seating hamstring curl, get less exposure on that bicep bend.
So this is D1, uh, leg extension, quad extension, um, really simplistic movement. Something with its exercise that you see online a lot. It's like, for some reason, some craze about like saying that you can change your toe angle and that's gonna help you bias like vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedialis, or like rec fam. Just because you change the foot position doesn't mean that you're changing the tension on the quad. The quad's all inserted on one singular tendon that goes over the patella, inserts on the tibia. So when you're doing quad extensions, we wanna just maintain a neutral position with our quads and work knee extension. So not a lot of thought goes into this exercise. Load it heavy, get into your, your working set interval of around eight to 10, 10 to 12. Get into that relative mechanical failure and just, just load the weight heavy. So I see like programs written with like four by 10, five by 10 on these exercises. Like probably someone's not working into relative failure on sets one, two, and three. And then maybe are hitting it on sets four and five, but that's more of a volume failure, not like an actual mechanical failure. So again, posted something the other day, it's talking about like just kind of intent of the movement. Make sure like our intentions are doing the exercises for something. Not just getting on something, moving our legs and extension. It's like pointless movement. So make sure we have a thought and intention of doing this. Trying to get mechanical failure, push to mechanical failure. That's one set. Do it again, call it. E1 today finishing up, standing calf races. Um, had a lot of exposure to see the calf races in our program. Going into some standing ones as well. This gets some variability there. So it's going to be a little bit more soleus. Uh, standing to be a little bit more gastroc. So again, uh, finishing up this leg day. Uh, just to recap, went through deadlift, so get into some type of hinge, hip extension exercise, so whether it's deadlift, RDL, load it. More of a skill exercise for us. Went to hack squat, loaded it. I'm still working on it as a skill. Nick's using more as an output machine. Uh, just getting into something that's heavy knee flexion, knee extension. Uh, so whether that's hack squat, whether it's like a goblet squat, front squat, anything that has a vert more vertical chest position. When it's uh, some single leg hamstring curls or double leg prone hamstring curls. Uh, for me, I'm focused a lot more kind of on internal rotation in a single leg position to help my kicking. But anything prone hamstring curl, if we're able to just kind of dissociate, you know, the, the legs and knee flexion. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more bicep fam if you do double leg versus single leg, but try to work a unilateral movement if you have any disparities and asymmetries. Uh, get into a quad extension, loading the quad heavy. It's an isolated exercise to so just get the quads feeling juicy. And then finishing up with these uh, standing uh, calf raises for a little bit more gastroc focus or kind of the, head, the big belly of the calf. So big leg day. We want to have our arms like legs, legs like tree trunks. So go ahead and load the legs heavy, get them strong, get them big, um, and get a good workout in. So stay this for your next leg day. Peace, guys.